The motion, to ease the cost of living pressures, was discussed extensively on the second day of Parliament. Other issues raised included providing aspiring lawyers with a longer training period and allowing the official registration of stillborn children's names. A motion put forth by Leader of the Opposition and Workers' Party WPE, Chief Pritam Singh and Mr. Louis Chua Sengkong GRCE, sparked a seven-hour debate that saw 20 MPs speak. The motion called on the government to review its policies to lower cost of living pressures on Singaporeans and their families. All eight WP MPs spoke during the debate, calling for structural changes instead of one-off fiscal payouts for needs such as health, transport and utility costs. Non-constituency MPs and CMPs Leong, Man Wai and Hazel POA from the Progress Singapore Party were also in favour of WP's motion and spoke about certificate of entitlement and food prices, among other issues. While the ruling People's Action Party PAP MPs agreed that cost of living was a concern, those who spoke highlighted the existing policies that help families in need, especially lower-income groups. The government also said that it was open to doing more, if needed. Mr Singh said the inflationary environment and rising prices have contributed to a cost-of-living crisis for some Singaporeans. In bringing the motion, he said that in 2022, the WP had identified the cost of living as a major pressure point for low- to middle-income families, which would be most acutely felt by families with both young children and aged parents to care for. The party also warned earlier in 2023 that Singaporeans were living through one of the most rapid rises in cost of living in history. While the party acknowledged the one-time reliefs extended to eligible households, Mr Singh said that the national policies need to be re-examined to make them relevant to today's Singapore. Perhaps Mr Liang Eng Wa Bukit Panjang proposed amendments to the motion to drop the call for the government to review its policies. Instead, his amended motion called for the acknowledgement that the cost of living is a global concern and for the government to continue pursuing policies that together lower cost of living pressures on Singaporeans and their families. However, it should do so without undermining fiscal sustainability and burdening future generations of Singaporeans. The WP MPs and PSP NCMPs did not vote in favour of the amended motion at the end of the debate. Instead of just six months, aspiring lawyers will now get a year-long practice training period following legislative changes that will pass in Parliament. Once they have finished at least six months of their training period, trainees can choose to apply for a provisional practicing certificate which allows them to appear in court and give advice to clients under supervision. This new regime will start in January 2025. Senior Parliamentary Secretary for Laura Holumosum said these lawyers will be better equipped to hit the ground running once they complete their practice training period. The changes are a result of recommendations made in 2018 by a committee tasked by Chief Justice Sundaresh Menon to review the professional training and admission regime for lawyers in Singapore. Ms. Rahoyu said that other countries and territories like France, Germany and Hong Kong placed an emphasis on the practice training to complement formal education. When speaking about the bill, some MPs raised concerns about trainees having fair remuneration and benefits such as paid sick leave now that their training period will be extended. Ms. Rahoyu said practice training is essentially an apprenticeship and provides opportunities for practical exposure. She encouraged law firms to provide fair and reasonable compensation to trainees for their contributions. Parents will be allowed to register the names of their stillborn children under a new bill introduced on Tuesday. In another change to the Stillbirths and Births Miscellaneous Amendments Bill, the definition of stillbirths will refer to the death of a baby 
after the 24th week of pregnancy. Instead of the 22nd week. At present, parents cannot register the name of their stillborn child in the stillbirth certificate under the Registration of Births and Deaths Act 2021. The Ministry of Home Affairs MHA said that being able to register the name of a stillborn child may help some bereaved parents deal with the painful experience. In 2022, there were 110 stillbirths registered. According to the Immigration and Checkpoints Authority ICA, the ministry also said that the amendment to the definition of a stillborn child is intended to align with the cut-off period allowed for abortions. A woman can get an abortion here up to her 24th week of pregnancy. In its statement, MHA said the 24th week cut-off threshold for abortion is based on medical and scientific evidence of fetal viability outside the womb. Some MPs livened up the cost of living debate by dropping animal-centric phrases in their speeches to illustrate their point. PSP's Mr. Leong said more discerning Singaporeans have pointed out that the PAP government likes to give Singaporeans a chicken wing and then take back a whole chicken. He explained that the government is like a shrewd financial manager who gives out occasional short-term handouts but commits Singaporeans to long-term payment schemes that require them to pay out consistently over the long term, totaling an amount that is much larger than the handouts. Meanwhile, Mr. Saito Yipin Potong Pazer said the opposition had been milking the GST cow for a very long time and asked that they go and milk another cow instead as the government has repeatedly explained over the years why the tax increase is necessary. Prison inmates are housed in a male or female institution based on their registered sex and not their self-identified gender, said Law and Home Affairs Minister K. Shanmugam. However, he noted that there may be situations where it may be better not to house an inmate with others of their registered sex for safety considerations. He was responding to Mr. Muroli Pillai Buket Betak, who asked what the Ministry of Home Affairs approach was towards the housing of transgender persons in prisons here. His question was based on a recent case in Scotland where a transgender woman was convicted of raping two women before transitioning, and was initially housed in segregation in an all-female jail. Should there be safety considerations or discomfort among inmates, transgender persons may be housed alone within the institution of their registered sex, or in a shared cell with other inmates who are in the same situation, said Mr. Shanmugam. If inmates are found to have different external genitalia from their registered sex, prisons may initially house them alone in individual cells according to their registered sex. A medical specialist will then assess if there has been a complete physical change in genitalia. And if so, help the inmate update the registered sex with ICA, said Mr. Shanmugam.